Hey guys, my name is Hab and this is the Simoventa CC64, a tier 8 Italian tank destroyer that is not only the first appearance of an Italian tank on the channel, but also arguably one of the best tank destroyers, if not tanks, at its tier. But why is that? Well, let's find out, the reasons are rather obvious. The gun itself is actually an interesting choice where you can choose between two options, an auto reloader of 3 shots but an alpha of 320, which is considerably lower compared to the single shot gun's 410. Why it has 410 I can't answer, but the differences between the guns, especially since the 10.0 changes aren't that big anymore. I'm not gonna go into detail why I think this change was a bad idea, but overall the auto reloader has better accuracy and a shorter aim time over the 120 mil which has the advantage of a consistent output. Personally, I preferred 120 mil as I didn't find the 105 to be anything particularly better. You should probably experiment with the guns a little bit, but I suggest getting the 120 as soon as possible. You also have 7 degrees of gun depression, which helps with the armor a lot. The armor itself is, uh, wow, uh, <laughs> it's a lot. A lot of armor, but only on the front. The armor itself is impervious to the vast majority of guns that you can actually fight at this tier, which is great, but that also has to end at a point. The effective value of the armor is at around 290mm frontally, which is simply outstanding and resists most guns, even a lot of guns at higher tiers. The upper plate itself has a similar amount of armor at around 275mm. The lower plate is the only prominent weak spot at the front, which is around 140mm, but it's not a large area, which is where the gun depression kicks in. Once you are utilizing that gun depression to its maximum, the tank is basically impenetrable. Of course, that doesn't mean you should just sit somewhere and camp the entire battle. The side armor is terrible and presents an easy weak spot even with minor angling. The cupolas on the roof are very small, but that doesn't mean they're not hittable either. It's a really low chance, but you should be aware of those as well. They become a far easier spot to hit if you're playing a tank that's considerably taller than the CC-64, which isn't a particularly hard sell at this tier considering some German heavies. Overall, the armor is simply outstanding, and it's this tank's party piece. The mobility, as is the norm for these Italian TDs, is unfortunately not great. Even something as oddly sluggish as the Borsig is more mobile, albeit it has a slightly lower top speed. To add salt to the injury, the T28 prototype has a higher power-to-rate ratio. Needless to say, this is not gonna be the fastest tank round the block, far from it actually. So overall, let's talk about some pros. Great frontal armor, good damage output, and good gun depression. And the cons, poor side armor, and it's overall just sluggish. Overall, if you're considering keeping the tank, I'd absolutely recommend you do it. This is one of the best tanks that it's there currently, if you're willing to get past the slightly more sluggish playstyle. It's an absolute win rate farmer, and both a damage taker and a giver. And now, let's check a replay on it. Alright, so, I did lie a little bit, it's not actually my replay, but it is from my buddy Keo, who is a, let's say, fervent admirer of the CC-64 for very specific reasons. Now, this madman almost has a hundred thousand battles, so, you know, he's played the game a lot. And he's played a lot in the Kuntruka, several hundred battles, in fact. And... <laughs> When I knew him when I was properly starting out, I realized that he was playing most things with a touchpad, so I hope he has at least advanced from that. He did get a new laptop, so I hope he got a mouse with it. But anyways, I would say that this is a pretty solid replay that actually just shows what the CC-64 is pretty much capable of. You have that fantastic gun depression, you have that actually pretty damn good hold down profile. Not to mention the fact that you have a very high damage output. That Chimera is just unfortunate, but... Then again, the Chimera is not just a tank that you press W with. And with this, you can make a stronger argument about that, but... Eh, I still wouldn't exactly over-eagerly push with this tank. It does not have a ton of reactionary mobility. 
you can sort of see that on the fact that Theo actually runs with the engine boost and in the equipment he has decreased cooldown timers on the consumables, which is relatively useful. Now it is a pretty big part of threat for any tier 8 tank, the tier 30. It's called the MF recently, it absolutely slaps. In case you haven't seen the review, it's worth getting. Now he has been a little bit unfortunate with his 5100, but it's only gonna get worse because the IS-5 is also looking this way. And there we go, that makes Kyo already two-thirds of his health basically down. Not to mention, there's a 704. So, you can see one definitely grand problem with the CC-64, and that is that the health pool is absolutely diabolical. 1300 health is not really bad for a... Watch this shit. <laughs> 1300 health is not exactly bad for a tier 8 tank destroyer, but you have to consider the fact that this one fights on the front lines very often. If I'm not mistaken, the Ferdinand has about 1400 or even 1500. But then again, this is a problem that most tank destroyers have. It's just that it hits the CC 64 a little bit more, surprisingly. With something like the ISU, which doesn't really have armor outside its giant mantlet. By the way, here you can see that he's looking for the T30, realized he's looking this way, and has instead decided to look at the Centurion. But something like the ISU, which doesn't really have any armor, and basically just a giant mantlet, with that you're kind of already predisposed and thinking in your head to just not really sacrifice HP without much thought. With the CC64, you're constantly thinking that your armor is going to be a crutch, which in some cases is wrong, but not in this replay, as we'll see. Kyo's actually almost got 3k damage already, which is relatively impressive for a scope of two and a half minutes. But he's gonna end on a much higher note. The IS-5 is down, and all that is left is the 704 and the ML2, so let's speak of the 704, and oh god, yeah, but he's looking. <laughs> and it bounced. <laughs> This is one of the examples where Kyo just got massively lucky because 286mm should have been able to pen almost even the upper plate, but granted, he was very strongly angled. But we are coming to the conclusion, as you can see, he's definitely stayed in most of this area in the bottom corner of the map, but you cannot deny that he hadn't had a pretty solid impact on the rest of the battle. He used the terrain very well, he used the gun depression to its advantage, and whenever he could hose a target down, he absolutely did. And there we go, that is all the damage that Kyo is going to receive, but... Max roll and engine fire. <laughs> and here we are, the 5k barrier. So, that is it from Kyo. 5.3k damage in a tier 8 tank destroyer. Seems about right. Sounds definitely fair. And that is gonna be it for me. This is a tank absolutely worth keeping. This is a tank absolutely worth playing. But I don't see a reason as to why more people shouldn't own it in their garage. He's even got a Holoman, which is pretty nice. But, as always, that's gonna be it for me. My name is Happy though. If you liked the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, whatever. And I'll catch you guys later. Hopefully, a little bit more early this time, but I've been having issues with video editors lately, so I am experiencing some trouble and I'm working on some solutions. So anyway, catch you guys later and see ya.